All right, kiddos, this next section is all about the structure of the atom and basically how we are going to modify Dalton's atomic theory. Most of it is accepted. Most of everybody in the scientific community is like, yay, this is great. But as technology um, advanced and more and more discoveries were made, there are actually two major revisions to his atomic theory. One, that whole concept that things are indivisible, we know that's no longer true, and that there aren't different types of the same atom, because indeed there are. They're isotopes, and in the upcoming uh, videos you'll learn all about isotopes. So a lot of what you already know about an atom is more advanced than John Dalton. We know that there's three parts of an atom. There are electrons, there are protons, and there are Jimmy neutrons. Okay, so one of my uh, pre-classes for this is usually talking about um, what do you already know about an electron and a proton and a neutron? And the most common things is that people say these are negatively charged, that protons are positively charged, and neutrons go everywhere for free because they are neutral no charge. <laughs> Some students um, already know that there is a nucleus to the atom and inside the nucleus is our protons and our neutrons and that the electrons are a cloud that orbit around it. Okay, so um, we'll get into all of those things and how they develop and the scientists that you need to know for this. All right, so the first thing that happened was the discovery of the electron. And that electrons are those negatively charged subatomic particles. You guys know that. Okay, and it was discovered by J.J. Thompson. And I emphasize discovered. They were not invented. He didn't make them. They, they, they existed. He, he figured them out. All right, and this is based off of the famous cathode ray tube experiment. So I would definitely know... Um, his name and his experiment and that it was the electron, those three things. So this cathode ray tube experiment is basically this glass tube that has a different kind of gas inside, okay? Elemental gases, mixture of gases, regardless of what it is. It's on this little wooden stand. In class, I show you what it actually is. And he takes a power source and attaches it to the negative end and it goes to the positive end and he sees this really cool beam of light these excited particles inside so basically kind of like the first um like um neon light is what he saw and then he takes a magnet Okay, he takes a magnet, and magnets have negative ends and positive ends, or north and south poles, whatever you want to say. And when he put the negative end up to the beam, the beam bent away. He moved it back, and then he moved it up again, and it kept on bending away. When he flipped the magnet and put the positive end up to it, the beam went towards it. So opposites were attracting here. Okay, so here is another picture of the cathode ray tube. Here is a picture of someone holding up a uh, magnet to it. All right, so this magnet right here is going to have the positive end, and that means that this beam has to be negatively charged. Okay, this didn't happen when it wasn't electrified. Okay, so there had to be something that was there to block the charge when it wasn't electrified. So he figured out that there had to be these negatively charged electrons and there had to be some sort of positive material. Not protons yet, but positive material. Okay, I attached in the notes at, to the website um, a really nice video demo um, of this whole thing on YouTube. So you can check that out as well. All right, so this discovery of the electron is basically what gave way to the television. Televisions used to be called um, like tubes and they had like actual tubes inside and those tubes had different kinds of um, um, elements and they were turned on in different um, uh, frequencies and 
mo modulations and you ended up seeing that either the red the green or the blue showed up and then tvs went from you know 720 quality to 1080 now we're up to 4k which is 4000 so basically what it did is these number of pixels got smaller and smaller and smaller and that's what makes that crystal clear wonderful picture of what you have so thank you um thompson you're the one that made tv possible all right next up on the discovery and the next scientist that you need to know is eugene goldstein because he's the one that discovered the protons he was also looking at that cathode ray tube experiment that um Thompson was writing about and he's like this is incredible but he was looking at it under a different lens when people were looking at the electrons going towards the positively charged anodes what he found is that he had positive things going in the other direction so he then coined them positively charged particles or protons and he figured out that they are much bigger, much heavier, 1,840 times the size of the electron, which is unbelievably massive, but they have the same charge. Okay, a neutron was discovered by Sir James Chadwick in much, much later. Okay, he was doing work with uh, nuclear sources, alpha particles uh, here are positively charged particles what they really are are these um, helium nuclei nuclei um, which we'll talk all about in the nuclear chapter coming up and he bombarded some beryllium with them and they found that there was carbon that came off and a Geiger counter figured out that there's also a neutron coming out and in a couple of videos you're gonna figure out what uh, these numbers all mean but according to the law of conservation of mass and matter this left side and this right side all have to equal one another. So 4 plus 9 is the same as 12 plus 1. 4 plus 9 is 13. 12 plus 1 is 13. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 0 is 6. So there had to be this unifying um, substance that had the same mass as a proton but didn't have the charge of it. So what you should do is really focus on this slide right here. Star, circle, highlight this. This is super important because this summarizes all of those subatomic particles. Okay, so this is going to take a look at each of our particles, the electrons, the protons, and the neutrons. It talks about their symbols. Electrons are lowercase e with a negative sign. Protons are lowercase p with a positive sign. Okay, capital P is phosphorus, so you don't want to accidentally make a capital P. N with a little zero sign is neutron. Capital N is going to be nitrogen. Capitalization really matters in chemistry, so please be careful with that. All right, the relative charge to one another, electrons are one minus charge, protons are the opposite, one plus, and neutrons, no charge. And then relative to one another, okay, a proton and a neutron are the exact same. Okay, but our electrons are much, much smaller. One, 1,840 of it. Okay, AMU we'll get into in a couple of um, videos as well. That stands for Atomic Mass Unit. Okay, it's the unit that they use um, just to put things into perspective because these nuclear scientists were so tired of doing actual mass numbers of 10 to the negative 28, 10 to the negative 24th. So they were like, uh, this equals 1 AMU, and that's what we're going to use. And then this would be even smaller than an AMU, 1 1840th. So that is the history and discovery of the protons, neutrons, and electrons, and a summary of what they all are.